Hi everybody, it's Joey and I am back from Tel Aviv and today we're going to spend some time just talking about the highlights of the Grand Final. Saturday night's Grand Final, Duncan Lawrence emerged victorious, just like most people had predicted. Um, but we're going to run through a reaction of the Grand Fi Final highlight reel that EBU had published and I am going to consider the full voting results that we received. Uh, that were published and a little bit of a reaction of everything. Um, so before I get into that, I would just mention also too, I am wearing my Tulia t-shirt from my Polish girls who did not make it to the final. We're gonna have a separate video about the semi-final voting and the crimes within that. And we'll talk about that another time, but wanted to give them a little shout out. Hope they're okay settling back into life in Poland. But um, without further ado, I'm gonna get back into um, checking out this video. So um, hang on one second. So let's get into the reaction of the grand final highlights. So of course, to start off the program tonight, we've got Netta flying the plane with the 26 contestants that are, have made it to the grand final for Tel Aviv. We're quickly reminded about the Derek Dream logo on, on the back of this plane. Netta is working her purple and black hair, making lots of sounds that she's known for. And she's ready to fly this plane into Tel Aviv and bring the 26 contestants to her home country of Israel. I like this because it's really bringing the home, the idea that she started this journey to bring Eurovision to Israel back in Lisbon. And here we are. Um, this is sort of where we left off with the television audience uh, was, was taking all aboard and bringing it Dare to Dream. So. We're quickly launched into some of the highlights here of the Parade of Nations. Of course, Donna International making an appearance early on. Um, what I liked here was that they broke up the arrivals of the different countries and they interspersed the Israeli artists into the opening. So while we have Kobe and Hatari arriving and greeting the audience, we're getting performances from Ilanit um, from 1973 Eurovision. We are also are gonna see Nadab from 2015. So it's a great way to be reminded of where we are at this moment and also be introduced to the 26 contestants. We're keeping the theme here of the, of the airport. I know a lot of people had trouble at the airport in Israel, so I don't know if maybe they should have rethought that. But um, Golden Boy really making its way back into popular culture with, um, I, I need to show you Tel Aviv um, before I leave. Um, it probably was a fantastic week for Nadav, probably the best week he's had um, around Eurovision since his participation in 2015. So we get a look at our hosts. Um, I didn't really feel like they were necessarily a highlight of, of the program. Um, but what was a highlight was having Malta open this show. I think um, this was great for Michaela because even though it didn't set Malta up for a great result necessarily, it was prestigious. People are going to remember this as starting the party. Um, I'm really happy for Malta. It is going to be a great day when they finally do win Eurovision. Um, the fans are going to just go nuts. Um, of course, Yonida got the second spot from Albania. She performed with great enthusiasm and really brought the ethnic vibe from Albania. Reminded us of Fik, which happened in December so many months ago. She's carried the song and has it evolved. So proud of her, so happy for her. Coming in third here, we had the boys from Czech Republic, Lake Malawi. I will say that I am very shocked at the lack of the televote support for them in both the semi-final and the final. Um, looks like they really carried the the jury vote and that's what got them as far as they did and um, good for them. I'm really happy with the direction Czech Republic's going. Of course Germany, um, zero points from the televoting audience and some of the jury votes that they received were actually in error from Belarus. So I'm wondering if it's going back to the drawing board again for Germany this year. I didn't like the way they held their songs in the national final up until the last moment. They need to maybe rethink that. Sergey. Okay, so one thing learned, do not ever count out Sergey. Ended up with a third place finish. I mean, this is really, really strong finish for him. Some people had counted him out towards the end, maybe myself included. Viewers at home responded very strongly to this and he gave an impressive vocal. Of course, we're reminded that John Paul Gaultier was there in the audience. 
um, largely talking about some of his muses, including Madonna. So we've got a bit of that. Okay, now so on to Denmark. This chair has been around since Dance Melody Grand Prix. Leonor is still swaying on it. Not much has changed. Um, a pretty good showing for Denmark. Okay, San Marino. All right, so Sir Hat, historic finish for San Marino. This has been the best finish for San Marino in its history. People are not going to forget this anytime soon. The party was brought from this song. A really great marketing by the delegation. Uh, I give them a lot of credit. Now, North Macedonia has really, really surprised people with Tamara's strength in the jury vote. This, I felt, played out a similar playbook to where Austria was last year that kind of came out of nowhere with the jury vote and did really, really well, but we knew it was going to kind of tank once we started to look at the televote. But again, North Macedonia has been absent from the finals for a few years now, and uh, this was a great result for them. So we're back in the green room getting a look at sisters as well as Michaela and the boys from Lake Lally reminding us why they're so charming. Um, they are going to be fan favorites and hopefully around for a while. So back on the main stage now, someone told me that the Mamas should have came out a little earlier in John's performance. I guess hindsight, I agree. There was obviously something missing here for the televoters um, for them to not respond in the same way the jury did. Overall, still a great showing for Sweden. So, Slovenia, I'm really surprised at this because we thought this wasn't really going to connect with televoters at home, but the strong fan base really from the televote is what helped them finish 11th overall. So this was a really good result for them. Okay, so of course, Tomta now. The one thing I have to say, I'm really surprised at how Tomta did not have in also in the semi-final as well as the final, such a strong uh, placing. Uh, I think we were thinking top three for the semi-final, top 10 for the final. She didn't get that far. Um, still a great party, great energy, and I'm still looking for that Tom to Eleni photo. So Duncan with his performance here in 12th position. I think this she, he saved his best four for the night and the results there have delivered. So. Duncan, again, just coming in second in both the jury and the televote. Interesting scenario, but winner of Eurovision 2019. And here is Katrin from Greece. Failed to connect with televoters, really. I think that we were expecting a lot more from the, from, from the Greek entry in terms of its success, but Greece missed the final last year. It was great to have them back. It seems to be their natural habitat. Okay, so Kobe, um, Starting the second half of the show, this was one of the best moments in the arena, I have to say. Watching him play to his hometown crowd, seeing the genuine reaction and how excited the Israeli people were to have this event happening in their home and have Kobe as their representative. It was really beautiful. It definitely elevated the performance and the song. Coming up after Kobe, of course, was the televoting winners. Hey now, I am so happy for Tom and um, Fred and Alex, they have worked so hard. This has paid off for them. I'm so glad that the fans have placed them at the top poll position in their voting. It really, really is a wonderful story. Who doesn't love Kane out besides the juries? Um, after Norway, we're taking on a brief trip to the UK X Factor or some version of that. UK, of course, finishing in 26th place with a John Lundvik and song. Do not try to blame John for this. We gotta figure something out, UK. You gotta be able to do better. Sorry about that. Next up after the UK, of course, we're gonna take a brief break here and check in with our returning Eurovision stars, Sergei, Tamara, and Sir Hat. It's really interesting to see these, these contestants come back because they've all actually improved or match their previous um, efforts, so that's good. Big moment of the night, Iceland, Hatari, after all the controversy and all the build-up, finishing with the top 10 performance, and uh, we'll have to think and look about, let's uh, see what's going on with the controversy about their display of the Palestinian flag during the results portion, but still made the top 10 showing. 
Victor Crone surprised me here. I, I think that um, really was expecting him to skate by in the semifinals, but what we saw was that he was pretty comfortable in making it, largely because of the televote. So I'm wondering if some of that, his being from Sweden, maybe helped a little bit with that. Of course, Zena with the uh, Like It, bringing Belarus back to the final. This was a big surprise. Um, narrowly made it on the strength of the jury vote. And we were sort of thinking a song like this was just too juvenile to have some respect from the jury. So it's good for her. Next up is Azerbaijan. I just remember thinking this song is going to connect with people, but it's not a winner. It's going to make it to the top five. And that's pretty much what happened here. After Azel not qualifying last year, it's really nice to see Azerbaijan back where they belong in the final always producing high quality performances and, and artists. So really great to see. So now Bilal um, actually ended up close to finishing where some of his predecessors did, right kind of like in the middle of the leaderboard, um, close to Madame Mansur's finish and close to Alma's finish from 2017. I was really surprised that we didn't see stronger televoted numbers for, for Bilal, um, but there was a lot going on in the second half of this show, including my favorite, Mahmoud. Now, this was a really close second second uh, place. Only 30 points shy of Duncan. Italy have a lot to be proud of. I mean, Mahmoud started out in San Remo, Giovanni, winning that, bringing it to San Remo, winning San Remo, now finishing as the runner-up in Eurovision 2019. Just a really proud moment for the Italians. Uh, next up, Serbia. I, I feel like Novina just, this is just such a classy performance. This was a real, real glamorous portion of, of the evening. The, the language, the staging, her amazing vocal. Um, I'm really happy that she was there in that, in that place, um, prestigious place in the running water. Of course, right before Luca, who this song I'm sure is still being played somewhere in Tel Aviv as we speak because it was just on a loop all week long. This this was the party. This was, everyone loves to dance to this song. And great for Switzerland that they, they gave something that people liked. And it's gonna take a while for fans to try to get those dance moves perfect, perfected, that's for sure. Australia, a big surprise here. Um, Kate coming next to last in the running order, but really not not being able to crack the top five. We, we were thinking this was a potential threat to Duncan. Um, you know, juries didn't, rate it that highly, but also the fans at home weren't weren't um, bringing it to the top top five at all. So that was a bit of a surprise. And finally, Mickey is hard not to like. Really, this was, everybody was dancing to the song. The green room was going crazy, but juries barely gave Spain any kind of love. Um, and, you know, having the last spot, the televote seemed a little bit underwhelming. So, that really is the, that's the highlights for you. And like I said, we are going to have another video where we deconstruct some of the, um, the voting from the semifinals and talk about songs that maybe should have made it through, should not have made it through. If you could switch some out, what would you do? And talk about maybe some of the uh, disparity between televote and the jury votes. So let us know in the comments. Um, feel free to like and subscribe to our channel as we continue to update these videos uh, in the off season now and as we get ready for the Netherlands 2020. And thanks for watching.